Hello and welcome back to Planet J Judah and welcome back to another Reddit Am I the A-hole Fiber Art Edition? So if you watched last week's video you know that I was having trouble finding knit Am I the A-hole on Reddit. Um, for whatever reason the knitters of the world out there have not posted any am I the a-holes? Apparently, they are not. Just kidding. I don't know. They just haven't posted under knitting. It's been mostly crochet. So, that being the case, we are not going to go back and forth between crochet and knitting any longer. I am just going to be doing, trying to see if I can do both in the same video where I, I will look up knit, I will look up Crochet slash knit, crochet, knitting, crocheting, just to see what I can get done as far as fiber art related Am I the A-hole content. So, that being said, we are going to explore all of the above when it comes to fiber art as far as crochet and knitting. I suppose I can look up fiber art, but I don't think anything falls under that, but that being said, I will give it a go. And as you know, I will always do this blind. So when I look into Reddit, I've, I've got my Reddit at the ready. I haven't typed in uh, what I want to look for yet. And as soon as I do that, I'm going to put it for the last seven days. That way, I know that I won't be repeating anything from the previous week. It'll be something new, something fresh, something exciting, hopefully, and preferably just funny, unlike some of our other previous episodes. And if you find anybody that I have posted their stories that they are they hope, please do not troll their page. I don't want to be associated with anything like that. This is all in good fun, and we're just here to have a good time and enjoy the Am I the A-Hole stories, because <laughs> they are hilarious. And of course, at the end, I will always do something cute, and I might start just typing in fiber art and see if that'll bring up both crochet and knit and maybe other fiber art related cuteness? I don't know. We'll see. This is going to be a trial today. Are you ready? No, I don't have my cup of coffee. I forgot to get that, but that's okay. I'm excited. It's late in the day and I need to get this video posted today. So let's go and get started on Reddit. Am I the a-hole? Fiber Art Edition. Does that sound good to you? Let me know. If you have any suggestions as far as what I should call it, let me know. Type it in the comment boxes. Boxes? Leave me a comment below. <laughs> but let's go. <laughs> let's get my chaos out of the way, hopefully. We'll see. I'll be right back with our first story. Alrighty, so funny thing. I put in Am I the A-Hole Crochet and looked up for the past seven days and there was zero zip, zilch, nada. So knit for the win. This is from three days ago and the title is A friend asked me to knit some beanies for her to gift and then gave one to our common friend. Am I the a-hole for being offended? And Reddit does not give the, it says discussion and you can see that it's green. So it doesn't say either or. And just from the title, I don't, I'm not a hundred percent. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see what it says. So, I am a relatively new knitter and only recently feel like I'm reaching intermediate level. Fair, you know, 
A very good friend of mine, one of my best friends actually, asked me to knit three beanies for her to gift to some of her friends. I had given her a beanie as a gift last Christmas for the first time, and she was very excited with hand-knitted beanies. She offered pay, and I only asked her to buy the yarn. I also introduced her to Ravelry and let her pick the patterns she wanted me to use based on my skill level. Well, that makes sense. All went well, and she was excited of the results. Let's call her friend A. A few weeks later, the other friend on our friend group of three, we are three best friends since high school, sent me a picture showing me the gift she got from our friend and to compliment me on my knitting. I was shocked and feel very offended by this. Our common friend lives abroad, and while I have made something for her, I have not yet had the chance to give it to her, as I prefer to give it to her in person rather than mailing it. Let's call her friend B. Friend A knew that I had not yet gifted a hand-knitted item to friend B. How should I respond and deal with this uh, situation? I feel really offended, like my work was treated like something you buy from a fast fashion brand. I feel like every time I knit something for someone else, I do it with love and care and not as an obligation. I am being, am, I am being too dramatic, question mark. It also feels like friend A, with her action, tells friend B that, see, I got you a hand-knitted beanie from her, which she never would have put the effort and or money to make you because I care more and she does not. Mm, I, I think you're taking... Anyways, let's finish. I would really appreciate your feedback and thoughts on this situation. Has anyone dealt with something like this before? Okay, so I th in all honesty, I think the person is reading into it too much uh the friend b called to compliment her on the beanie now was it cool that friend a who knowingly knew that friend that the person the op um had not sent her a knitted item yet and sent her a beanie that she had asked her to do no, but I don't, I don't know. I don't, honestly, I try to look at the good in people and I don't think that friend A meant to send it as, look at what I got her to do for you instead of her just doing it for you to friend B. I think she's reading into it a little too much more than what it needs to be. Are you the a-hole for being offended? I mean, we get offended for the littlest things and whether or not you would think they're the a-hole in doing so. I mean, your, your feelings got hurt. So, and I'm not going to say that your feelings aren't valid. I'm just saying that you may have re read into it more than what it actually was. And made it worse than it actually was. So I, I, I'm not sure. I need to see what Reddit is gonna say. Okay. The first person who commented said she was honest with you that she wanted you to knit the hats for her to give as gifts. Correct? Yes, that is correct. Is your objection? to her behavior just that she gave one of the three gifts to a mutual friend? Or is it that you're realizing after the fact you don't like having knit items for her to give away at all? Well, that's an interesting question, but I mean, true. Because I don't see how it follows that giving one hat to a mutual friend and giving proper credit is using you and treating your work like fast fashion but giving your knits to strangers wouldn't be. You know, okay, see, that is true. 
that is true. I don't, yeah, I didn't really understand the whole being upset that, because she gave proper credit to the, the OP. Friend A gave friend B the information that she got the hat from, or the beanie, from their mutual friend and that she had made it. So I don't see, yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, so here's another one. It says, I don't really understand. You knew she would be giving them away, but you're mad because she gave it to someone you both know, question mark. I think you're way overthinking it. Exactly what I said. If you want to be in control of what others do with stuff you make for make them, then I really recommend not making anything for others because that's not how it works. Exactly. In the future, I'd either deny the request or at least charge for your work and not just the yarn so it's more an even trade. That, okay, exactly. Exactly. Once you gift give it to someone it's theirs to do with how they want and we've had this kind of situation before um but friend a was up front asked for the the op to cro crochet to knit beanies as gifts for other people just so happened that it was somebody that they knew together but, I mean, the original poster knew that that's what she was making and what they were being made for. She just, she just didn't know who the people that were receiving the gifts. Okay, so this is a comment underneath that comment that I just read. And it says, from what you dis you've described, you have nothing to be upset or angry about unless... The recipient wore the hat once and then threw it away or gave it away. She didn't treat it like fast fashion. You have reason to be happy that someone you consider a friend got that, got the hat you invested your time and en energy in. You may feel this was a bit weird, but that's very different from thinking it was wrong. Yes. Everybody's agreeing. They don't understand. So here's another one. I guess I'm really not clear on why you're offended. You said friend A asked for these beanies specifically to gift them to her friends. So you made them with the knowledge she was going to give them away as gifts. She even offered to pay you, though I don't know how much. That's neither here nor there. Which implies that she values your skills. She then gave it to your mutual mutual friend and told them that it was specifically made by you. So it's not like she took all the credit for the gift herself. Friend B complimented you on your knitting and gave you appreciation. So the thing that specifically offends you is that friend A gifted this to, hat to friend B before you could, question mark. Even if friend B ultimately knows it came from you, did you explicitly tell friend A not to give a hat to friend B, or is this just something you just expected her to know? Because if I was friend A, unless you specifically told me to do this, I really wouldn't have known. In fact, I might have mentally seen it as a collaborative gift to friend B since you both picked the pattern and she paid for part of it. Obviously, you did more work by actually making the thing, but she told friend B you made it, so I can't see why you would get offended. If the person receiving the gift knew it ultimately came from you, unless you, unless you actually told her not to do this, I think it's unreasonable to have just expected her to know this would upset you. Anyway, I'm generally of the opinion that once you gift something to someone, it's theirs to do whatever they want with it. Having very specific expectations about what they do with it and getting really mad or offended when they don't follow those ex expectations doesn't feel the healthiest. It's theirs once it leaves your hands. 
holding over them that you made it and should therefore have say over how they use it is controlling in my opinion. And I wouldn't want a handmade gift if this is what it means to receive one. So in future, I'd make sure to explicit, explicitly communicate any specific preferences you have about the gift you should be given to, to if you're making it. Or just make people gifts if you get offended about them not being used the way you want them to be. Or just don't make. Oh my goodness. When am I ever going to have an episode of anything where I don't stumble over my words? So, okay, I'm get, I, everybody is relatively confused on the original poster story. I, exactly, once you give it, once it transfers hands, it is no longer yours to say what can be or what can't be done with it. And definitely you should make that information known prior to being made and handed over. Because once it's in their hands, it's theirs to do with how they choose. And friend A said exactly what they wanted it for. They just didn't say exactly who they were wanting it to be made for. And even though... Friend A kind of jumped the gun on give, gifting a handmade item by you before you actually did it really doesn't matter, at least not in my opinion, um, because Friend B, I don't know if they loved it, but they obviously complimented, so I would say that they loved it and they knew it was from you. It was made by you. So I would say, yes, in this situation, you are the angle. That is my opinion. Reddit was confused, so I don't know. Let me know in the, dis in the description box, in the comments. All right, let's see if we can find another one, whether it be from a little bit longer than just a week ago. <laughs> All right, so this one was a year ago. I typed in, uh, am I the a-hole fiber art? And this is what I found. I couldn't, it's, it's struggling. I am struggling to find fiber art content in Reddit. Am I the a-hole? Now I can find other stories, but anyways, I digress. So this is from a year ago. It says, am I the a-hole selling larger sweaters for more? Right off the bat, I would say not the a-hole. Because the clothing, clothing industry does that. When you get into plus sizes or like double XL, triple XL, they charge more. And it's understandable. It sucks because I am one of those plus size people. So it sucks that a pair of jeans may cost more for me than it does for my average size friend, average size, whatever that may be. Um, but it just does. They charge more because it requires more fabric. So therefore it's going to cost more to, to make not the actual labor, but in the supplies. So I would say no, not the a-hole for charging more for a larger sweater because you're using more yarn, you're spending more time on the larger item, so therefore it should cost more. Just in supplies alone and your time alone is going to require a higher cost. Whether it's the same sweater from small to large, when you hit those plus sizes, I don't know. Um, I honestly, I don't sell Clothing, I don't sell anything for that matter, but I don't sell clothing, so I don't really know. I would have to look into it. Do, does other fiber art related people sell their larger items for more? But I see here that Reddit has dubbed the not the a-hole. We have, I don't know if you can see that very well, but it looks blue and it says not the a-hole. So, 
here's the story. And just to let you know, it is a bit long, so this will be our last story of the day, and then we'll be on to something cute. Mm, excuse me. I, 21, female, crochet mostly as a hobby. I recently started selling a few pieces here and there, mainly to keep paying for supplies. Don't I understand that? <laughs> I charge based on how many stitches the project took. That's interesting. Since that's a convenient way for me to factor in both materials and my time spent. Makes sense to me. I sold a sweater to my friend Molly, not real name, for somewhere around $150, which is pretty cheap for a handmade sweater. Yeah, I can agree. Molly's friend Steph, not real name, complimented her sweater, and Molly got her in touch with me to see about me making one for her too, which I was ex <laughs> which I was ex excited about because I've never had a stranger interested in my pieces. The problem Molly is pretty small person, and Steph is not. Molly's sweater took less time and yarn for me to make than Steph's, than Steph's will. So I thought it was fair to price accordingly. Steph says I'm being fat phobic, and that the prices should be the same since they are both sweaters. And Molly said to me privately, maybe just lower the price so she drops the issue, quote unquote. I don't want to upcharge Steph and be unfair, but I also don't want to do un I don't I also don't want to undersell myself since I put many hours and these into these pieces. Normally I just ignore what Steph says because I know from experience that people don't respect fiber arts, but since Molly is suggesting I do what she says, I'm not sure. Am I the a hole? Update. Kind of crazy thing happened Monday about this. Steph complained to Molly at work about the whole situation, and Molly got very upset with her. That was a su surprise, because Molly tends to avoid conflict at all, at all costs. But she said she was frustrated with Steph, talking about me behind my back. A sweet person like Molly, snapping at her, was apparently enough for Steph to decide to have a conversation with me face to face and we were able to come to sort of an understanding. This has all been very confusing and stressful and I don't think it's worth it. I have decided to stop making clothes, clothing for anyone who isn't a close friend and just stick to plush toys. Thanks everyone who gave some input. Okay. I can understand her completely and I'm sorry but Steph, being a larger person, should know that corporations, big time corporations, do the same exact thing. They charge more for anything that is plus sized. Now, if you, if it's not a plus size, I don't, I don't know. I would have to I would have to really sit down and figure that out. And, but I mean, obviously you need to account for your supplies and your time. That's how it should be charged. And doing it by stitch makes a whole lot of sense to me. I never thought about that. So, I mean, that makes a lot of sense because that accounts for your supplies and your time. And so, yeah, I would definitely say not the a-hole. And that Steph person should have known better. Because if you're a larger person, you know these things. You know they charge more to make these items. Okay, if you are someone that has a size 13, 14 shoe, does it cost more? Because those shoes are hard to find. Honestly, you know what? I am not sure. I would have to really look into that. Let me... I do know that clothes, for sure. Especially women's clothes. I'm not sure about men's clothes. Because I don't buy plus-sized men's clothing. But I do know for sure that women's plus-sized plus clothing 
is more expensive. As much as that sucks, it is more expensive. So let me, let me figure that out and we'll be right back. All right, so I Googled whether or not it costs more for to buy larger shoes. And it says, generally speaking, shoes may cost slightly more in larger sizes than in smaller sizes. This is because the cost and skills required to manufacture and design shoes for larger sizes may increase. Larger sizes require more materials to make, which can lead to increased costs, which is exactly the same as regular clothing. So, uh, yes, anybody who has to deal with wearing larger or actually even I know someone it costs more because their feet are so small that they are, even though they are an adult, they have to wear specially made shoes to fit their incredibly small feet. So therefore it costs more because they're specially made. So anybody who has to deal with larger clothes, larger sizes knows that it costs more to buy those clothing pieces. So first, first comment, not the a-hole for cheap machine made clothing. It makes sense to keep everything the same price since the materials and labor are much lower part of the price of the item. You wouldn't say that a quilter who sold a eight foot quilt for more than a six foot quilt quilt was tall phobic. Well, that's, yeah. Although Depending on the clothing, whether it's cheaply made or not, you know, you can buy stuff at Walmart and it's going to have two different prices for that plus size. All right, here's another one. Not the a-hole. I crochet and knit and, I, and am not a small person. People who don't craft don't understand how much time, effort, and material costs go into it. It takes longer to make larger things. It's more expensive, too. It's not a machine crank cranking out a large, larger garment. It's hours of my time. I'd probably tell Steph that I am no longer interested in crafting for her since she called me fat phobic for simple truth. So, yeah, everybody's saying not the a-hole. Uh, not the a-hole fellow, fellow crocheter here. Large project equals more yarn, more of your time. You aren't the a-hole, and you're certainly not fat phobic for wanting to be compensated properly. Sadly, a lot of people that aren't crafters don't understand just how much your materials, your materials and time is worth. So, I mean, exactly. And I'm sorry, but anybody who is of large stature should know that they charge. And we're talking, I go to Walmart and it's like two or three dollars more for the larger item. Now that's going to, that's just because it's fabric, not and, and the time isn't really that much different, but it's based mainly on the fabric. Whereas crocheting or knitting, anything that requires hands-on making stuff, even sewing, if you go to somebody who is a professional um, seamstress, I don't know what the male term would be, sewer, um, they're going to charge you for the amount of materials and the amount of time. And it's going to be more than somebody who is smaller. A company won't have to do that quite so drastically, but that's because it's a manufacturer, it's a machine. Well, not necessarily a machine, but I mean, Because they they are hand done, because they they are sewers that make these products. But um, 
I don't know. I don't know. They're, they're pumping out these things left, you know, boom, boom, boom. So it, it takes a lot less time. It's just a little bit more fabric. Um, but they upcharge larger sizes. So I'm going to stop my rant. <laughs> you are not the a-hole. Your time and your supplies cost more than somebody's smaller garment. So not the a-hole. So yes, not the a-hole. Now we're going to see if we can find something cute. All right. So this is an entry from five days ago and it's called Hobie Halloween. It's Amanda. You see her name here, so I'm not exactly sure. And it is absolutely adorable. Um, there's five pictures that you'll be seeing as I read what this says. Um, let, let me see. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It says, Hobie Halloween, it's time to vote in the Haunted Halloween Amigurumi Championship. Hobie's Halloween Amigurumi Championship is in full swing, and there are so many amazing creations to check out. If you love spooky, cute crochet projects, this is the competition for you. Here's my entry, her entry, a spooky Halloween tree featuring a bat, spider, spider web, witch hat, pumpkin, and autumn leaves, all made with lots of love and creativity. You can vote here. So I suggest look up, um, I think I looked up cute crochet because fiber art wasn't giving me anything and cute crochet slash knit wasn't giving me anything so I started with cute crochet finally and I found this and I absolutely loved it but yeah these are absolutely adorable I love the little spider it's so cute little, little bats oh my goodness I mean it is just absolutely adorable all of it is adorable and she is incredibly talented I suggest go in to your Reddit, look up and the uh, look up Hobie Halloween and her name, and vote. I'm gonna vote right now. All right. Oh my gosh, there are so many different things to um, projects to vote for, but I did vote for Amanda. Hers is absolutely cute. I did have to go into, um, it said, oops, it looks like you're from the US, United States. Obviously, I'm assuming Amanda is not, so her link will send you to wherever, you just click on wherever it is that you're from. If you're from the United States, click on the United States. Otherwise, you can just stay on the thing, and it'll direct you, it'll show you three different things to vote for, and you want the... Um, Haunted Halloween. You click on that and hers is the second one, number two, and yeah, give her a vote. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It was a little chaotic trying to figure things out. I'm not sure how I'm going to go on from now on. Um, I'm probably going to call it uh, Fiber Art Edition or maybe Crochet Slash Knit Edition. I might do that. I might do that because it doesn't seem to work with just fiber art. But we will look at whatever it is that we can find as relatively new as possible. Come on, fiber art world. Give us more Reddit Am I the A-hole? Because we love it. Anyways, I had fun. It was it was very interesting and the stories were fun and the the something cute was absolutely adorable I loved the whole little setup it was so cute and I will leave all the information in the description box below and with that if you like this video hit the like button leave me a comment if you'd like to be notified of any and all future uploads, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click all on the notification bell. And now with that, gravity works, guys.